What's up, Quest? Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Come closer, come closer. Can you hear me? What's up, Quest? Can you guys hear me now? How you doing today? Hey, check it out. You might have noticed I'm not there tonight. That's because I'm in the airport. I'm on my way across the world. My name is Adam and I'm the youth pastor here at Quest. And if you're new around here, I just want to say, hey, welcome. We are so glad that you joined us tonight. Here's the deal. I'm not there tonight, as you might have noticed. So you're going to have to come back next week so that we can meet personally because I want to personally meet you. And so come back next Wednesday and we can say what's up. But for tonight, I got something super super important that I want to share with you from the other side of the planet. We've been talking about Jesus and how is Jesus real and all this kind of stuff and people say that Jesus' body is not in the tomb. So I decided I'm going to go and find out for myself. And so join me. We're going to go on a little journey today all the way across the world to Israel and we're going to check out like is this thing legit? Is Jesus actually alive? Did he actually live where the Bible says that he lives? And I think what you're going to discover is that the places that Jesus went, the stories in the Bible, those are not just made up stories. Those are actual places on planet earth that you can go to and you can hang out there. So I'm going there, I'm gonna hang out there and I wanna kind of invite you guys into that journey. So it's gonna be a great day today. We're gonna go to Israel. I'm in the airport, I'm getting ready to hop on my flight. So I will talk to you guys in a second. a little layover in Canada. So right now I'm switching airplanes and then I'm going to hop on the plane that's going to bring me to walk where Jesus walked. But first, before we do that, there's something that I really want you to think about. So here's the question you got to think about. Is Jesus alive? How do we know? And why does it even matter? Here's why it matters, guys. 1 Corinthians 15, 14 says, and if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is useless and so is your faith. If Jesus is still dead, then everything that we believe in is literally pointless. It's worthless. We just should just peace out on everything we believe in. But if Jesus is alive, that proves that he's God and it proves that we would be fools if we didn't devote our entire lives to following Him. If Jesus is alive, we've got to do whatever it takes to tell everybody that we possibly can that He is alive. I'm telling you guys, if Jesus is still alive, it changes everything. And so the question that I want to ask you tonight is, is Jesus alive or is He dead? What's up guys? I am pumped up right now because I just swam in the Mediterranean. If you don't know what that is, I think you can see it right behind me, but that is the exact same ocean where Paul got shipwrecked. That's Paul, the dude who wrote like a bunch of the parts of the Bible. I was in the same ocean as him and I'm like, woo, this is awesome. Now I know that we're not here to talk about Paul, we're talking about Jesus, but what you got to get and what I want to say to you before we move on is that, that I'm in Israel and this is a real place and the things that you read in the Bible they're real places with real people they're not just made up stories and so you got to get this that when you begin to have doubts or questions you got to know that the things that we know about and that we read about from the Bible they're actual historical real places and right down the street is where Jesus grew up and lived his life and I'm going to be there tomorrow and I'm going to tell you guys all about it when I get home but man you you got to know that the Bible that we read, it's a real deal. What we're talking about today is Jesus and is Jesus alive? Well, here's the thing. If Jesus is alive, that means that he had to have risen from the dead because we know that he was crucified. The debate becomes on did he actually rise? And you got to know this, that I believe Jesus rose from the dead. But if you're going to be a follower of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. It's like the foundation of your faith. It's the foundation of everything that we believe is the fact that Jesus Christ 
rose from the dead. And it happened just down the street from where I'm at and that pumps me up. People make a lot of things the foundations of their faith. People make emotions, people make feelings, people make uh, their parents' faith, but you gotta make the resurrection of Jesus. That needs to be the cornerstone and the foundation of your faith if your faith is going to last. Because one day, you're gonna have doubts. You're gonna have questions. You're gonna get challenged. And when those challenges come, you gotta know for sure if Jesus Christ rose from the dead or not. It's pretty clear that the tomb is empty. Nobody will argue the fact that the tomb is empty. It's pretty clear that Jesus appeared to many, many people. And so there's a couple options of, of either Jesus rose from the dead or something else happened. If he didn't rise from the dead, here's one of the possibilities. Maybe it's this thing called the swoon theory. And if you were here on Saturday night, this will be a review for you, but just stick with me on this for those who weren't here. The swoon theory says that Jesus never actually died. You guys, I believe this theory is crazy because crucifixion was intended to kill people. They tortured Jesus. They murdered Jesus. They pierced a spear through his side into his heart. You guys, they put a crown of thorns on his head. They gave him 40 whippings, bam, with the cat of nine tails, bam, bam, across his back. Jesus should have been dead like five times. And and the swoon theory claims that he never actually died. The problem is um, he would have had to uh, move the 2,000 pound stone. He would have had to sneak past the professional Roman soldiers that were guarding the tomb. And he would have then had to convince his disciples, even though he was he would have been nearly dead that he was he, that he'd risen from the dead. It's just not a plausible theory. Another possibility would be the hallucination theory. Now, the hallucination theory states that, that all the people who claim they saw Jesus that they were just having hallucinations. The problem with that is number one, it doesn't explain how the tomb is empty, and number two, if you were to study hallucinations, you'd learn that hallucinations do not happen in large groups of people, and Jesus appeared to groups of lots of people at the same time. He also appeared to a bunch of different people in different times, and that doesn't make sense if you study hallucinations. Hallucinations are individual events. And so, hallucination theory, ah. If you were here on Saturday night, we made some videos kind of answering this question of, is Jesus dead? Is Jesus alive? Check it out. There's many reasons why the hallucination theory doesn't fit. One is that usually when people hallucinate, it's not in a big group. And in this case, when people think that the 500 people were hallucinating, it wouldn't make sense because there's 500 people. And also, when people hallucinate, they don't all see the same thing. They each see something individual and personal. So because I like horses a lot, I would probably see my dad as a horse. And like, if you liked chickens, then you would see your mom or dad as a chicken if you were hallucinating or whoever it would be. So there are a lot of reasons why, but here are some just to get started. This theory wouldn't make sense because they all saw Jesus in one big group and it was all the same person. They didn't see individual personal things. It was all Jesus in a really big group. does make sense in this situation because this is in a smaller group unlike where they thought they saw Jesus and were hallucinating that was a huge group. Overall the facts prove that the hallucination theory is false. The other main theory that people propose is this thing called the conspiracy theory. And that theory states that all the disciples just made up the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. All the hundreds of people that appeared to him, all of them were just lying. The conspiracy theory claims that all of the disciples, they, uh, they all just made up this lie. And then the, the problem with that is that, uh, number one, is that... People don't die for lies. And all of Jesus' disciples, 11 out of 12 of them, they were tortured and murdered claiming that Jesus had risen from the dead. And the thing is that if if Jesus hadn't risen, if they hadn't actually seen him alive, they wouldn't have died for a lie because if this thing was a lie, they knew it was a lie. And all of them were willing to give their lives for the fact that they say that Jesus rose from the dead. That's strong evidence, you guys. People do not die for things they know are lies. The conspiracy theory is bunk. Don't believe it. Here's what actually 
happened. So imagine this, Jesus Christ, he gets killed, he's murdered, he's put on a cross, he gets put in the tomb, three days later, all of a sudden, he comes alive again, he begins appearing to all sorts of people. Now, imagine you're the disciples, the disciples, they were freaked out because they had been following Jesus, Jesus had gotten arrested and killed, and so they all ran and hid. You know, when Jesus was on the cross, they ran away. And so they're, they're, they're off, they're, they're, in, they're in hiding, and they're freaking out, thinking they're going to die. Well, then all of a sudden, Jesus begins to appear to them them and to lots of other people. In fact, Jesus appears to over 500 people, some of them all at one time, in this exact country that I'm sitting in right now. And it was this incredible thing. And, and when Jesus appeared to those people, it changed them. Something crazy happened. Those disciples, Jesus' closest friends, they went from being little, scared little wimps to being bold and powerful and, and being people who literally change the world. And I think the reason they change so much, the thing that transformed them, is that they saw Jesus Christ alive. And I'm telling you guys, the fact that Jesus was dead and now he's alive, it changes everything. It's the thing that transforms not only their lives, but it can transform our lives. That fact has transformed my life. The fact that Jesus is alive means that me and you, we can be alive. In Ephesians chapter 2, it talks about how we were dead because of our sins. You and I, we sinned. That sin separated us from God. It made us dead spiritually. What that means is that apart from having uh, our sin taken care of, we're separated from God. We're kind of like zombies. It's like we're alive and walking around, but on the inside, there's nothing going on. There's something totally missing on the inside. And when Jesus, because he went from dead to alive, he can bring us from dead to alive on the inside. And when that happens, boom, we come alive in Christ. Ephesians chapter two, verse four and five talks about how we've been made alive in Christ. And when we become made alive in Christ, whoa, man, it, everything changes in our lives. And if you've never experienced that, I'm telling you, that is the reason that you're alive is to become fully alive. You'll never experience full life apart from Christ because what Christ does is he comes into your life, he forgives your sins. And when those sins are forgiven, it's like you experience life for real. Your spirit comes alive. You go from being like a walking dead person like a zombie to being a fully functioning human whose spirit is alive and I'm telling you people are dead inside and so they try to find life in other things people try to find life in things like sports people try, try to find life in things like popularity and things like friendships and things like money and things like fashion and things like fun and things like sex and drugs and alcohol and all those different kind of things people try to find life in those things but what they find is those things only give life like a, a glimpse of life a small taste of life and then they boom, that those things fade and they leave you empty. But when you find Christ and you put your faith in him and his death and his resurrection, ask him to forgive your sins, what happens is you begin to experience life to the full where you come alive on the inside where you're really alive. And that's what I want for you and that's what Jesus wants for you. We can be made alive because Jesus is alive. He has defeated death. Listen to me, guys. Jesus did not come to make bad people good. Jesus came to make dead people alive. And because of sin, me and you were dead until we put our faith in Christ. He didn't come to make bad people good. Jesus came to make dead people alive. And that includes you, and that includes all of your friends in your schools. And so, if you have any friends, you think they're spiritually dead inside because they don't know Christ, man, they need you to bring them the good news of the message of the hope of Jesus, that he wants to bring them from death to life. Guys, check this out. I am at the Sea of Galilee, right there. You see that? That's a that is the lake where Jesus walked on water. And I, <laughs> imagine you're God. Imagine you create the whole universe, and then you decide there's going to be a certain spot where you have your son do his life and do his ministry. Well, this is the exact spot that God picked to put Jesus on the planet. Like of all the places on the planet, he picked this one. There's something special about this place right here, you guys, and about this lake and the region around it. And man, I'm right here. I'm on the Sea of Galilee. This is where Jesus walked on water and I am pumped to be here right now. Listen, you guys, this is not just a made up Bible story. This is the actual place and it actually happened. And I'm telling you guys, the God who made water has the ability to walk on that water. And the God who created life 
has to be able to, the ability to take a dead life and raise it up again. And that's what he did with Jesus because Jesus was dead, but now he's alive and I'm here experiencing it. And I'm telling you guys, this is true and this is real. Because Jesus is alive, we can be made alive. I know thousands of people who when they put their trust in Jesus, it transformed their lives and made them alive on the inside. But every single person that I know who has denied Christ and refused to put their faith in the resurrection of Jesus, those people are living empty, hopeless lives. So my question for you tonight is, are you experiencing life fully alive? Or is your heart fully alive? Or is there something missing inside your soul? If there's something missing, if you're not fully alive, Jesus offers that to you, it's available to you, all you gotta do is ask him. You gotta surrender your life to him, you gotta put your faith in him, you gotta trust him and ask his resurrection power to come into your life and take control. When you do that, boom, you're gonna come alive.